Hi guys, uh, my name is Michael, Michael Chang. Um, today I'll be talking about how to master any programming language. Uh, just a bit of background, that's me. Uh, you can find me on, on Twitter, on GitHub, and my blog site. You know, take a quick picture of this and you can move on. Okay? So, a little bit about me. Uh, I'm a self learned front end, back end iOS developer. Uh, I've been building websites since 2001. I started the PHP user group. Uh, back in 2006 in Singapore. Uh, I also co-founded iOS Dev Scout, which is a uh, developer group for iOS developers in Singapore. And um, I worked in a couple of startups. Uh, one is Found, we were back in 2010, and Big 33, now called Big Me, uh, back in 2012. Uh, recently joined about a year ago, almost a year ago. I joined a company called New Innovate. New Innovation. So basically, we, uh, we do a agile shop. Ruby on Rails and stuff. So back in the comp uh, I started out as a PHP developer back in 2010, 2001 rather. And um, I've been working on various types of websites, uh, stuff I built on my own using PHP, uh, stuff on WordPress, on Drupal, and whatnot. So I learned. I started as a web designer, but I kind of picked up programming as I, as I went along because I found I have a natural curiosity of how things, asking questions about how things work, right? So the first language I actually learned was actually ColdFusion. Have anyone here used ColdFusion before? CFML, right, <coughs> tax for the win. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, that was the first language I ever learned. Um, that's for, for building websites, because I was working with a bunch of uh, developers who were using that straight out of uh, Singapore Poly, no, Tomasic Poly. Tomasic Polytechnic, which is a local uh, polytechnic. And they're all girls. Four girls, no, three girls, teaching me how to code in CFML, which is kind of interesting. Um, What's wrong with that? No, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think it's great, and we need more of them. <laughs> Indeed, they are. Because they are very patient. They are very patient. <laughs> so, anyway, um, <laughs> so I started as a PHP developer, uh, C sorry, CFML developer, and then I went to PHP, uh, but as and then from there, I went on to learn JavaScript and all the other stuff. And Objective C, it's quite an inter quite interesting job because I joined a company where the mobile developer was leaving the company. <laughs> so it was like the CEO looked at me and said, Hey, you can do mobile, right? No. You can learn, right? Yes. Let's do this. <laughs> <laughs> so I figured out iOS development uh, um, using Objective C, uh, native only. Anyone's asking? Uh, and uh, and of, since last year, I've been, I've been doing Ruby on Rails uh, professionally for, for the last one year. So I guess I, I come with a fair bit of experience in learning, in switching from language to language. So I want to share with you a little bit about, a bit about my experiences in doing so. So the first thing I need to know when I come to any program language, like recently I've been learning a bit about Go. Have you, anyone here use, use Go? Golang? Yeah? Cool. So first thing I want to ask myself, how do I print stuff on screen? You know, the 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 fundamental Hello World app, right? <laughs> how do you get stuff printed on screen? So on PHP, you just do echo something or print something. In Ruby, it's pretty much the same thing. Like puts something, right, and it, it ends up on screen, right? So that's the first thing you learn how to get stuff printed on screen. <coughs> Second thing you do is to learn about data types. What are different types? How do you Represent, represent information in that programming language, like string, um, numbers, floats, right? So, so you ask yourself those kind of questions. How do I represent a string? How do I uh, represent a number? So usually the string will be a single quote or double quote around that piece of word or something you're writing. Actually, wait, just show of hands, how many of you are actually developers here? <laughs> okay. Uh, how many of you are non-developers here? Okay. So I, I suspect this is kind of your shared experience as well. Um, so um, if I'm speaking to newbish level or something, please kick me in the ass, right? So yeah. So um, how do you represent flows? How do you represent data? Uh, date, date time. Uh, in our current current job, we have a big hoo-ha about date time and date and time zones and shit, this is, in Ruby this is pretty much soft, but it's a bit of a nightmare because our client doesn't want data to be stored in 
GNT time, and if you store it in SGT, which is kind of a crazy bit. Anyway, um, um, number three. So you you learn about how to output stuff on screen. You will learn about how to pre represent data uh, of different types, like strings, integers, floats, and stuff like that. Third is how do you pass information around, right? So basically, how do you pass information? We read the same script from one script to another script, and so on and so forth, right? So that's about that's how you pass data around and when to use which one, it's like variables. When you use variables, when you use constants, uh, constants are immutable, unchangeable, usually. Variables are mutable, can be changed. Arrays, caches, and variable scopes. Variable scopes being how, uh, the visibility scope. You see, can I actually use that variable in this function or in this file or something like that? Is it, has it been declared or instantiated? Stuff like that. So how do you pass stuff around? So in the PHP script, you have things like a super global array, which is a dollar sign underscore get or the dollar sign underscore post which represents, represents what you send in a form post or what you send in a URL. So that's pretty much how you pass data between one file to another file. Uh, in the Ruby on Rails app, there will be params, app, params uh, attrib uh, attribute, which you can then get stuff from the form post or whatnot, right? So that's one of the ways you can pass data around. Also number four, how do you add artificial intelligence? So stuff like if else, you know, control control we call it control structures. How do you control the flow of the of the code, right? So code usually reads from top to bottom, right? Sequentially. So but how do you how do you break the flow such that you will skip certain parts of the code? So that's one thing that you need to learn. In any programming languages, I think you should have this. You should have. <laughs> yeah. So there's control structures, flow control, if else statements, switch cases and stuff like that. So learn about this how you how to do that in that particular language. Um, so it's, it's so it's so because every language has the same concepts, but they work, they present it differently. And the last part is the don't repeat yourself layer too often, right? So <laughs> so stuff like functions. How do you create functions? Your functions are a group of of uh, programming code that's grouped together and it can be called together, and the results can be returned and used in a, in a subsequent piece of code. So functions. How do you get classes? Uh, classes are another good way of uh, not repeating yourself, right? So you have one class that has uh, the behavior of a, of a piece of code. You can duplicate it or instantiate create uh, objects from these classes. So uh, the classes are like the blueprint of how to create a, an object, right? And this object will be will contain all the behaviors that you will need in the piece of code. And I'll do things like server side inclusions, right? So require include. How do, you, how do you import code from other other places? So that's a, in in a nutshell the five simple tips of how to learn any programming language. Anyone? You all understand, right? Okay, right. Great. See, I'm speaking to a room of you know, of converts. <laughs> anyway, so some specifics here. Um, so on the left you see PHP code. On the right you see. Ruby code, so you know strings. You have a string like this with a, a, a dump code. Same thing, in, same thing in uh, Ruby. This is how you do variables with all the sign. And this is variables in, in Ruby. Basically, you don't have to do anything. Just just declare something, write something, right? Name, for example. But to make it appear in a string, this is what we call a string interpolation. So variable interpolation into the string, so the name appears inside the string. So how you do, that's how you do that in Ruby, um, and this is how you do that in PHP. So um, pretty straightforward. Um, numbers, floats. This is how you represent represent variables with dollar sign in front. So anything with dollar sign in front in PHP represents a variable container. Um, and in Ruby, that's the other way around. Uh, Ruby also has a dollar sign. Uh, uh, prefix as well. This one for global variables, so it will be it will be available throughout the entire app. Um, classes, static variables, constants. Um, more specifics about flow control. For example, in P in PHP, you have the if statement. Some with some condition. If, it's tr if the condition returns true, returns do something inside the this block code. Same thing in Ruby. So Ruby has a very nice syntax, so I think if anything with a question mark behind it, it's kind of sort of like a boolean. 
right, which means it's true or false. So if true, print the word hello. Good morning, by the way. <coughs> um, so puts hello, oh yeah, so this is a different ways of, of presenting it. Um, and of course, the information can also be stored as, so the information can be stored as one layer, or it can be composite, as, as in a complex composite layer, as in multiple information can be stored together. So like an array, for example. Um, so this is an array, array of, uh, of objects, of numbers, array of numbers. <coughs> array, uh, uh, we call this an associative array, an uh, associative array in PHP. This is what we call a hash in Ruby. Pretty much the same concept. You have a reference to it, a, a key reference to it, and then you have the values inside. In iOS, or in Objective C, it's called a dictionary. Um, I think Java, some Java devs here will probably know what that is, right? Hashes. Okay, got it. Um, more specifics. In PHP, this is how you do classes. So the, the this, this class extends the parent parent class, right? So there's an inheritance involved. So it's we're learning about all these concepts as well in different programming languages. How do you do OOP? In Ruby, uh, a less uh, less than sign basically uh, represents the inheritance as well. Okay. Some more language specific goodies, right? So what you need to learn in to we be good at any programming language. First of all, learn about package management. How do you do? Uh, how do you include open source code into your into your application, right? So that's really, really cool. Like in PHP, there's there's Composer, which is a package management tool. In Ruby, there is Gems. Uh, you can do that as well. Uh, there are different tooling available. How what kind of text editors can you use? Um, and lastly, how do you get help? Basically, find out. <coughs> Go to Google, Stack Overflow, look for screencasts on, on the web. Um, if your internet connection is not very fast, go get some books. Another way is to find a senior. Find a really good senior that can basically teach you a pair program with you. Right? Um, that's all I have. Oh yeah, my company is hiring, so yeah. So we're looking for Python. Uh, we do Python, we do Ruby, we do Scala right now, uh, Node.js, everything else, right? So uh, we're hiring, so um, come check us out. Um, that's all I have. Thank you. So, did you learn any other programming languages besides the ones that you talked about? Um, like for fun at home? For fun. Uh, I've done some and, uh, Arduino stuff before, so it was also quite interesting. Um, so I, that I basically, the, the, if you go to hackerspace uh, later, there is this little door access thing. There's, <coughs> there's infrared. The infrared door access thing is done to, is done with it as an Arduino uh, setup. So I dabbled a little bit of that. Um, yeah, similar concept as well. Like, or how do you create a variable? How do you pass stuff in? Right? In in in, in, in programming for Ardu Ard for an Arduino, there's uh, there's a startup, there's a start, and then there's the loop. And then you, there's nothing else. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's a different. Uh, it's like it, it has an event loop, like uh, like JavaScript. So you got to think about okay, how do I get in and out of the event loop and stuff, or how do I do stuff in really event loop? It's interesting. Do you use some abstraction like design pattern in your programming? <coughs> I think design pattern comes a bit later. Once you've started for the, again familiar, familiarizing with the the, the basics. Like what I've shared with the five uh, uh, basic points. Once you understand the basics, then you have to think, bring bring those design concepts in, like uh, design patterns. How you do active, uh, how you do M M MVC pattern, um, active record pattern, stuff like that, factory pattern, everything else. So I think those are more like helping you write code in a way that is smart. Uh, and that's where that's why I talk about reading other people's code. Uh, learning, learning about uh, using a package manager lets you import code from, from other people who are doing open source stuff and then you can read their code and get a sense of, oh, this is how you do, so this is how you do this properly, you know, in, 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 the, in the open source world kind of thing. So it's kind of cool. Yep. So how many open source contributors here, you're writing your <coughs> open source libraries, you know, it's out in the world, you know, 
It's out in the world. Awesome stuff. Um, yeah. Okay. Right. That's all. I have. So let's thank Michael. Thank you. Bye bye.